In this lesson, we are going to study strong mathematical induction. Here is the strong principle of mathematical induction. Just like with PMI, we have an open sentence with the set of natural numbers as its domain. Suppose that the following two conditions hold. First, P of 1 is true. The second condition says that for any natural number K, if P of 1 and P of 2 and so on up to P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 must be true. If this is the case, we say now that P of N must be true for all natural numbers N. The difference of PMI from strong PMI is that for PMI, our second condition says that if P of K is true, then P of K plus 1 is true. However, strong PMI says that P of K, P of K minus 1, up to P of 1, everything below P of K plus 1 must be true. If all of this are true, then it implies that P of K plus 1 is also true. Why is it strong? Because we have more assumptions in strong PMI. Everything below P of K plus 1 must be true. We also have our generalized strong principle of mathematical induction. It only says that we don't necessarily have to start at n equals 1. We can start at n is equal to m for a fixed integer m. So therefore, for the generalized strong principle of mathematical induction, you start with the base case as p of m and then everything below p of k plus 1, so p of k, p of k minus 1, up to p of m is true. All of this being true implies that the next step, p of k plus 1, is true. Let us consider this example. We have a sequence defined recursively. The first term is equal to 1, the second term is equal to 3, and a sub n is equal to 2 times the term before it minus the term before a sub n minus 1. We have to show that a sub n is just 2 n minus 1. Let us get a few terms of this sequence. We have 1, 3, and then this part is saying that we have a sub n minus 2, a sub n minus 1, and then a sub n. In order to get a sub n, you just need the two terms before it. So for example, we have 1, 3. What is the next term? it will be equal to 2 times 3 minus 1. So this is equal to 5. What is the next term? So we get the two terms before it, 3 and 5. So that's 2 times 5 minus 3. This is equal to 7. So indeed, we actually have 1, 3, 5, 7, and so on, 9, and so on, and so forth. For our proof, we say that we proceed by induction. Take note that this starts at n greater than or equal to 3. So therefore, our base case is at n equals 3. If n is equal to 3, our a sub 3 is equal to 2, a sub 2 minus a sub 1, which is equal to 2, times 3 minus 1, which is equal to 5. We already have our 2n minus 1 here. This is exactly what we want. For our inductive step, we now suppose that a sub i is equal to 2 sub i minus 1 for all i from 3 up to k. This part here is saying that p sub i is true for all i from m up to k. Okay, we want to show that a sub k plus 1 is equal to 2 times k plus 1 minus 1. So that's 2k plus 1. By definition of the sequence, our a sub k plus 1 is equal to 2 times the term before it, which is a sub k minus the term before a sub k, which is a sub k minus 1. However, from our inductive hypothesis from this one, 
This is true for all i's that are less than or equal to k. So therefore, our a sub k here is equal to 2 times 2k minus 1. My a sub k minus 1 is equal to 2 times k minus 1 minus 1. When we simplify this expression, we now get that this is equal to 2k plus 1. So therefore, a sub n is equal to 2n minus 1 for all n greater than or equal to 3. Can you see now why we need the strong induction here? Because we have two terms. We have a sub k and a sub k minus 1. If we just use the regular PMI, we cannot assume that a sub k minus 1 is equal to 2 times k minus 1 minus 1. Next, let us consider this statement. Every natural number greater than 1 has a prime factor. We all know that this statement is true. Let us now prove this. To prove this, we will use the strong principle of mathematical induction. First, let us write this in symbols. In symbols, this is saying that for all natural numbers n greater than 1, my assumption here is that the domain is a set of natural numbers, n has a prime factor. What will be our base case here? Our base case is n is equal to 2. Since 2 is a prime number, the statement is true for n equals 2. For our inductive step, we start with let k be a natural number. And we suppose that for all i from 1 to k, i has a prime factor. So notice here that for the inductive step, we have for any k greater than or equal to m. Therefore, we have let k b greater than or equal to m. And this is now the premise of our implication. Suppose that for all i from 1 to k, i has a prime factor. We want to show that k plus 1 has a prime factor. I will divide it into two cases. If k plus 1 is prime, then we are done because its prime factor would be itself, k plus 1. So therefore, for our next case, we suppose that k plus 1 is composite. Take note that our cases are exhaustive here because there are only two possibilities. A natural number greater than 1 is either prime or composite. If k plus 1 is composite, then there exists a natural number d such that d is strictly less than k plus 1. So that is d is less than or equal to k, and d is greater than 1, because d cannot be equal to 1. And the other condition is that your d divides k plus 1. So this is just saying that d is a factor of k plus 1. Since d is a factor of k plus 1, it has to be strictly smaller than k plus 1. Hence, it is less than or equal to k, but it has to be strictly greater than 1. This is where our inductive hypothesis will come in. Take note that your d is smaller than k. It is below your k. By our inductive hypothesis, d has a prime factor. Let's say r. However, since r divides d and d divides k plus 1, what can we now say about r? r is also a prime factor of k plus 1. In particular, r is a prime factor of k plus 1. So this proves that our k plus 1 has a prime factor, and that is r. So therefore, we just have shown that all natural numbers greater than 1 has a prime factor. For our next example, let us show that every natural number greater than 1 is a prime or can be written as a product of primes. What is our base case here? Our base case is, again, n is equal to 2. 
you can just say if n is equal to 2, we are done. So we are right. Since 2 is prime, the statement is true when n is equal to 2. Again, we employ the strong principle of mathematical induction, actually the generalized because we are starting at n is equal to 2. For our inductive step, we have let k be a natural number with k greater than 1. And we now suppose the premise that the statement is true for all numbers less than or equal to k. So we have i greater than or equal to 2, less than or equal to k. i is a prime or a product of primes. We want to show that, again, k plus 1 is either prime or a product of primes. Again, we divide it into two cases. If k plus 1 is prime, we are done. This statement, k plus 1 is prime or a product of primes, is already true because this is already true. So therefore, we suppose that k plus 1 is composite. We want to show that this is true. It can be written as a product of primes. Since k plus 1 is composite, there exist integers a and b such that k plus 1 is equal to a, b, meaning to say a and b are just the factors of k plus 1. But of course, this a and b will be greater than 1 but less than or equal to k because they are factors of k plus 1. But of course, they are the non-trivial factors, so that's why they cannot be equal to 1. And just like in the previous slide, this is where we are going to use our inductive hypothesis. We have here that A and B are less than or equal to K. So therefore, A and B is either a prime or a product of primes. So that is, we can write A as... P1, P2, let's say up to Pm, B is equal to, let's say, Q1 up to Qs. For some prime numbers, P1, P2 up to Pm, Q1, Q2 up to Qs, where M and S are natural numbers. So take note that I wrote A and B in this way because if A is prime, then that means that A is just equal to P1. That is your M here is equal to 1. If A is a product of primes, then there are more than one factor here. So thus, we now have that our K plus 1, which is equal to AB, is now equal to P1 up to PM q1 up to qs. Thus, k plus 1 here is a product of primes. So therefore, we have just shown that any natural number greater than 1 is either a prime or a product of primes. I just want to summarize what we did in the proof of the last statement. We wanted to show that k plus 1 is prime or product of primes. In order to achieve this, take note that for our case 1, we assume that k plus 1 is prime. And therefore, the conclusion there is that k plus 1 is prime. And then for our case 2, we assume that k plus 1 is composite. And in the end, we showed that k plus 1 is a product of primes. So notice that we did proof by cases and on one case, we obtained this one. On the other case, we obtained this part here. So that is why the conclusion there is that k plus 1 is prime or k plus 1 is a product of primes. So remember, if you have proof by cases of for example, here you obtained heart, here you obtained star. The conclusion is that you were able to prove star or heart is true.
For our last example, we will show that there are infinite number of primes. Again, we will use the strong principle of mathematical induction. So for our proof, we proceed by contradiction. So suppose on the contrary that there are finite number of primes. If there are finite number of primes, we can put them on a set. So we let F be the set of all primes. So that's P1, P2, up to PK for some K. So here, K, of course, is a natural number. We now consider capital N to be equal to the product of all these primes and then plus 1. By definition of N, what can we say about this? It is not inside the set F, correct? Because N is greater than each of the PIs. Since N is greater than PI for all I, from 1 to K, N is not in the set F. So what does that mean if N is not in F? It means that N is not prime or N is composite. From example 2, we know that n has a prime factor. But we already have the list here of all the primes. So we now know that there exists at least one p sub i here which divides n. Therefore, there exists an l where l is between 1 to k such that p sub l divides n. If we consider n minus the product of p1 up to p sub k, so all of this primes, the, we get the product that what is this equal to? This is equal to 1. However, p sub l divides n and p sub l is a factor of p1 up to pk. So therefore, p sub l also divides this number. P1 up to PK. What does it mean? It means that P sub L divides 1. Let us recall if you have D divides A and D divides B, then D divides any linear combination of A and B. So in particular, this is a linear combination of n and p1 up to pk. We have now obtained a contradiction because a prime number cannot divide 1. Therefore, our initial assumption that the set of primes is finite must be false.